All right, let's uh, have a quick overview of the EWC. So if you've been in wireless for a while, uh, you'll know that uh, Cisco AeroS is uh, pretty long in the tooth. It's at least 15 years old. I, I tried to find the birthday uh, and I couldn't, but uh, I know that it's been around. I've, I've been working with it for 15 years. Uh, so it's, uh, it's pretty dated. Things have changed a lot. You know, just the, the whole IT industry has changed in the last 15 years. And I would say when you're developing software uh, in the, the last 15 years, the standards on how you develop software has changed, right? I mean, now we're in this whole agile thing and quick delivery, etc. Uh, so, the, you know, the process of writing good code, you know, um, efficient code, documenting the code, uh, so if people leave and come into new people come into the company, uh, they can look at the code, understand what's going on. If there's a bug, uh, that you can find it easily and, and kind of squash it. Uh, so, you know, they got a they got a lot of use out of AeroS. I have had a lot of successful sites with it, so it's it's treated me well. Uh, but I was definitely ready for uh, some modern uh, controller code from uh, Cisco in. Uh, that's what we got, right? So this is this is built from the ground up, right? This isn't Mobility Express, uh, which is based on AeroS. This is uh, totally new iOS XE 9800 code uh, that runs on these APs. Uh, and some of you might be familiar with uh, uh, this 3650, 3850, and the 5700 series, uh, which was iOS XE uh, controller software. Uh, this isn't the same. This 9800 is completely revamped. Uh, that that release was not very successful. It had some challenges. Uh, but the 9800, it's going on almost two years, and it's it's getting there. I you know the feature parity is there. They're fixing things quickly. Uh, out of the gate, I didn't have any real issues with it. I have production sites running on it now, uh, so it's it's good. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with it and I'm glad that they have released the embedded version uh, into the APs. Um, so what do we get? So supported APs, uh, you'll note, and this is, this is one of the little, little caveat gotchas, um, the embedded uh, controller versus a real 9800 is uh, uh, the supported APs for uh, just being an AP uh, is the Wi-Fi 5 AP, Siri APs, uh, Wave 2 though. Uh, so with a real 9800 you you get the Wave 1 uh, Wi-Fi 5 APs. Uh, so you can see it's it's pretty much all the Wave 2 APs, right, your, your 1800 series APs, your 28, 38, 48, and then your outdoor um, APs as well, the, the 1540 and 1560. Now, if you notice real close, the 1810 is not on this list, and that's that really short-lived wall plate uh, that was replaced quickly with the 1815. Uh, so just keep in mind that that is uh, a couple differences there. The real 9800 will support those Wave 1 APs. Um, so if you're doing a design thing and you have Wave 1, you might not be able to go with the EWC. Uh, and then if you do, by chance, uh, have any of those 1810s, they're not going to connect uh, uh, either. So uh, so supported APs and uh, EWC mode, right? So these are going to be the, all the Wi-Fi 6 APs, um, the 9115, 9117, 9120, and the 9130. Uh, they also, uh, since we started this, they have announced uh, the 9105s, which are going to be a, a small one, and then the 90, uh, 9105 wall plate, uh, which which will be added to this list. I'm not sure uh, how many APs they are going to support. I would assume they're probably going to fall into the 50 APs. Um, as you can see, the, the 9115 and 9117 are, are in. Uh, 
And then on the larger side, if you buy the higher end, uh, 9120, 9130, you get up to 100 APs or 2,000 clients. So keep in mind, you can mix these APs up, right? So if you, for some reason, wanted to support 100 APs, <clears throat> Excuse me. You could buy, you know, one of these 9120s and then run a bunch of 9115s. I personally don't recommend mixing uh, the the AP types. I've found that there are some challenges uh, when you, you're trying to do software updates. It makes it a little a little harder to do. Uh, that said, so the the features remain standard. Astra. So what that means is from the real 9800s. To the embedded uh, wireless controller version of the 9800, it's pretty much the same, right? So this Catalyst iOS XE uh, is the same common code. Uh, I do have that asterisk. There are some things, right? Like you can see, you're missing the wa Wave One APs. Um, the EWC runs in Flex Connect only mode, right? So. There's going to be some little things that you'll find along the way if you're trying to run both. Uh, even even in the GUI, there's some slight changes, right? So there's like an expert mode in the EWC uh, that you don't have in the 9800. 9800 is pretty much in the expert mode. All right, so what do you get? So what, these are the cool new things that uh, have come with the 9800 uh, controller. So now you can do patching, right? So the patching allows you to do bug fixes without new controller image, right? So got a bug, right? You can go ahead and patch it. Or more likely, you've got a security exploit because uh, these hackers are, are relentless these days. And there's a security update. You know, every week there's something that needs to be patched because of some new vulnerability. Uh, you can you can do that without changing the the controller uh, image, right? So you can you can run your approved controller image and just patch it. Uh, you also get AP packs, right? So this this allows you to keep your controller code the same, uh, but add support for a new AP. And both of these, you know, are really kind of beneficial if you're in the scenario where you you have to run um, you know certified code. You don't run the latest and greatest code. You, you run something that's stable, long, long-term uh, train code. Uh, you could still fix it when there's a security uh, vulnerability. You don't have to go to that bleeding edge code. If you want to run a newer AP, you don't have to go to that bleeding edge code. So this is great. I mean, these are great little features that you get. Uh, the EWC also has some licenses, uh, licensing changes. Uh, you are supposed to use a smart account. Uh, there is two licenses, so you have the essentials and the advantage licenses. And I'll hop out and uh, do a uh, I'll show the page here from Cisco that kind of compares the features that you get. <clears throat> so you can see this uh, feature matrix, and this is uh, you can Google this to to get this. Um, what you have is you have your essentials, you have your advantage, right? So your network essentials, if you're going down the essential route, you're going to get all these features here, right? If you go with advantage uh, licensing, you're going to get all these features here, right? So what's important to note here is some of those patching, uh, if you want to do those cool new patching uh, features, you're going to have to have advantage. Now, you buy these advantages, they actually call them the DNA essentials. You buy them with the AP. Uh, you don't buy controller licenses, even with the real 9800s. Uh, you buy these licenses when you buy the APs. And you buy them in three, five, or seven year terms. And you're either going to go with the essentials uh, at a lower cost because there's less features, obviously, or the advantage. And when you do the three, five, or seven, that's how long the DNA essentials and the DNA advantage are good for. And there's additional features that you get. Now, when that term runs out, if you don't renew it, then your licenses fall back. So your DNA essentials will fall back to network essentials. 
your DNA advantage will fall back to network advantage. So keep that in mind. There are some differences there. You are supposed to uh, go into your smart account and register the licenses uh, and tie it to your uh, EWC or your even your virtual controller or any of that kind of stuff. Um, that said, these licenses, they're kind of right to use right now. So even if it expires, they still continue to work. Make sure that you, you know, check out the, the smart account and register your, your controllers here. Okay, so another great feature that we, we got with the 9800 uh, in this new iOS XE is that it's purpose built, right, for modern, uh, modern technologies like APIs. So, you know, instead of like the AirOS, where I, I th I'm pretty sure they were talking about adding APIs, you know, trying to bolt that on to 15 year old software, definitely wasn't the right foundation. Could they have got it to work? Probably. Would it be, you know, buggy and inefficient and slow? I would say that that would probably be the case. So with the 9800s, you get that API support, right? You, you got your NetConf, you got your Yang. Um, you know, if you're ready to get your DevNet on, you can get in there and do your thing. Uh, and I'm not a uh, Python guy. I wish I was. Um, we do have a new course coming out. You know, I'm, I'm going to check that out and, and get my, my skills up to speed a little bit because uh, the future of network engineering is definitely going to require you to be a... Uh, a scripter or a Python guy or gal. Uh, so yeah, these are kind of some of the new uh, features that you're getting. This this is just a quick overview. Uh, it's very exciting. Uh, the whole 9800 and the 9800 going into the embedded wireless controllers. Uh, you know these are these are just great. Um, a, a great release and I'm super happy how how well it's been working out. All right, so let's get started with this micro course. Uh, thanks for watching.